In episode five of season one, Jeremy heads back to the Amazon to check out a fish that is known to ram people uh, straight in the chest, knocking them out of their canoe, their dugout, whatever it may be, possibly killing them if they pass out or, uh, you know, whatever it may be. You get knocked out by this massive fish. We, of course, who have watched the episode know this fish to be the Arapaima. And today we're going to be in the Amazonian maze chasing down a unique Arapaima. I have got a few different locations we are going to be heading to to try and catch this beast and uh, I hope it helps you catch your own at least give you an idea of where you could go the tackle and the equipment that you could use to catch one of these fish for yourself so if you're looking forward to this pack your tackle boxes hit that like button and let's get fishing everyone <laughs> Our first location is not far from the boat docks themselves, and in fact, it's in this little draw here, uh, inlet, what have you, and there is a nice little location that you can uh, park your boat and get out. So, you can see my marker back there. We are going to go ahead, keep it inside anyway. We're gonna toss down our rod holders, and I've got three rods which we are going to try and use to catch the Arapaima. First off, all these rods are La Cazadora. Now, they're not all 10 foot twos. This one is an 11 foot one, but essentially the strongest bottom rod that you can manage. Throw it out there with your uh, your reel. Uh, we've got 73 pound line on this. We're using fluorocarbon leaders. Don't have to worry about pointy teeth when it comes to the Arapaima, which is kind of nice. We've got a 10 aught barbless hook on here, though it could have a barb. That's up to you. More XP if you use barbless. And we are mixing it up. We've got an Araku minnow on one, and we've got large minnows on the other. I like these two different baits for going after uh, Arapaima, though. Depending upon the person that you talk to, will depend on which one they say. I know a lot of people like the large minnows, but I have a feeling that you can catch them pretty well in the Araku minnows as well. So we're going to toss out both of them. So... Being the uh, unique Arapaima, I mean, we could possibly in for, be in for quite a fight. I'm going to toss this guy out. I am used to fishing for the Arapaima with match rods, but figured we would give the bottom rods a chance since uh, evidently people catch them pretty well on bottom rods too. So uh, let's toss these out. And if we have uh, room, I guess we do, we might as well throw a match rod out there too just to see, uh, see which one's the best, I suppose. All right, we've got our match rod all figured out here. We are going to toss it out. We're already seeing some ripples on the water, and there goes the bottom rod. All righty, well, that is one fish. I can see our bobber now. Okay, yep, that is a decent-sized fish. Meters are going crazy, which is a decent indicator of a, uh, of a unique, but uh, who's to say with an Arapaima? This could just be a wily Arapaima, too. So uh, let's fight this guy and uh, see what we have on the end of our line here. Now we do remember the Wells catfish from the previous episode did take out a little bit of line and it was 75 pounds. I assume this Arapaima is going to be much bigger than that and that's why he is taking out a lot more line. Luckily, we are prepared for this. Um, now I don't know if this is going to be an uni, but will give us a look at uh, how much fighting we're going to be doing. Yeah, it's definitely not an uni. But for the amount of fighting we just did, let's see what we have here. A young Arapaima of only 68 pounds. So even lighter than the wells we just had. That is a good sized fish, everyone, and a good start to chasing down this monstrous fish. Let's keep him for old time's sake and uh, wait for another fish to come along, I suppose. And there goes the match rod. Come on, he nil. Oh no, and there goes the bottom rod as well. This could be interesting. I foresee a lot of beeping in my future. Don't wanna, ooh, that actually looked like a pretty decent sized one. It hopped out of the water. It's gotta be decent anyway. Had him in the 40s for just a moment. Now he's, uh, now he's taking us out to 80. This dude in the 30s now. Come in here, yo. There we go. Got one of another young Arapaima. 76 was that? Oh no, now we've got another one. Can we get this guy in real quick? Come on, man. Get in here. Little flip. Flip onto the, pull onto the ground. Another young Arapaima. Golly, three 
young Arapaima in a row. This guy pulling out a little bit of line, but we are fighting him. They really don't have anywhere to go when they're in that inlet. Got him skating up on top right now. Must be another young Arapaima, and that is exactly what it is. 77 pounds, and it's just crazy to call these guys young when they are this big. <laughs> 77 pounds, though, man. I mean, we only have one match rod, and we are catching him on the match rod pretty consistently. This dude is just taking out line. There's, like, nowhere for him to go in that inlet, so he still took us out to 160. That's just... Crazy. This is crazy. Roll yourself into here, buddy. Can't fight when you're on your side. <laughs> hey, look at that. We've actually got our first normal size Arapaima, though we still haven't gotten into trophies or uniques. So this is a regular size Arapaima, 126 pounds, which is still pretty cool. Uh, and we can get a good look at him. That is pretty neat, everyone. Let's go ahead, we'll keep him. And uh, I think it's about time we move on to another area. I got a lot of different spots to try out for Arapaima, so let's get in the boat. Let's uh, change spots and see if maybe a change of scene is all we need to uh, track down one of these monsters fish. This old boat's really struggling to get through some of these uh, narrower passages, but we are pushing through. <laughs> Alrighty, as we approach this uh, second area here, this is actually uh, a place I've known to catch uh, electric eel, which is right back there in that cove there. But if we take a look at the map, we can see we got the unique electric eel, which will come in a later episode. So don't want to spoil it, I suppose. But this is another area that we've got Arapaima in in the past. So let's go ahead, toss down our rod holders, see if we can get one of these fish in. So, while we battle this guy, um, the, the heads on these guys, it's just crazy. I've heard that it is just solid bone, and that uh, really, if they were to come at you, you know, hopping over the water, and we saw this in the episode with Jeremy Wade, as they jump out of that water, basically, you better watch out, another young Arapaima, because if you are in the way, they are going to take you out. A bunch of solid, just bone going straight into your chest, or to your head, whatever it may be. You might have some cracked ribs. Uh, you'd be bruised at the very least. But to think of one of these dudes coming into you, and we know that Jeremy got hit by one of them. Um, man, that's just, that is rough. Get this guy in here and start reeling in that other rod. Get in here, buddy. There we go. Oh, regular size Air Palma again, 2,700 pounds. This is on the match rod now. Match rod is pulling its way. I tell you what, we only have one of them out there. I might end up switching to doing two bottom rods and two match rods. Seems like we have three bottom rods out there, but we are catching them on the match rods pretty quickly, honestly. Alrighty, it looks like we've got him on his, his last bit there. Top notch. Oh no, oh no. Dare we say, dare we say, the first Araku Minnow just got taken. But by what? It looks so small. A freaking piranha. Well, that shows you how good the Iraku Minnow is, I guess. There he goes. There he's taking air. Oh, that's awesome. And here we go. We're skating him up on top. Must be a very young Arapaima here. And that's what he is. Getting near 1,000 XP for each one of these, though, which isn't too bad at this level. I think we're going to throw out two of these rods. And we're going to throw out two match rods as well. This looks like it's going to be a piranha, unfortunately, which is not good because I don't have very many large minnows left, but a trophy piranha. Oh no, you got to be joking me. Two at the same time. Ah, well, if that isn't a sign that uh, we should probably move on to a new location, I don't know what it is. All right, here we are. Moved on to another location here where we've caught a, a good size Arapaima. You can see the mark there. Basically, best way to do this from shore so by setting up on this rock and casting way over there, I realized that's not great. And yes, I could be using the rod holders on the boat, but I felt guilty about using that during the Wells Catfish one. And so I'm going to try not to use it on this one. Oh God, hopefully it doesn't come to it, but I might get desperate. We'll just have to see, I suppose. It's taking us out to 150. It's another guy getting in some air. That's so cool. It's, it always feels good that you think you might have a good fish on when it takes you out to 190 feet, but you never know. He's certainly 
certainly putting up a fight. I have a sneaking suspicion that we're gonna get him in here and he might be our first trophy versus uh, our first unique. Ooh, he's coming straight towards us now. Taking in a lot of line, which is great. Great retrieval on this reel here. Oh man, for a fish that's had us out at 160 for like, I don't even know how long. It feels good to see him just uh, double digits right now. Looks like a good sized fish. I still, oh, I still don't want to get too excited though. I have, I have a big feeling that we're gonna get him in here and it's gonna say trophy. <sighs> and I'm just prepping myself for it at the moment. He is not giving up yet. Honestly, it, it hurts more thinking about how how much I'm gonna have to fight in the next fish to be an you know to be another unique. Uh, if this is just a trophy, God, he's taking us out to a hundred again. He is starting to do his weird arapaima flips and rolls and stuff like that when they're about to be caught. So let's just see what we got. Fingers crossed, everybody. Ah, oh, it hurts. It hurts so much. He's just a trophy. Kills me. It kills me inside. 226 pound trophy though. $14,394. 12,824 XP. Oh, that's a ginormous fish though. I'll keep him and be excited about him. <laughs> God dang, dude. Oh, it's just crazy that this is just, this isn't even the fish that we're going after, you know? Well, it's certainly a giant fish. Can't go wrong with that. Let's go ahead and keep him. It's gonna fill up our entire keep net, essentially. I have got one last location to check out. These bottom rods are not doing anything here, which makes me think that they're dead for the day. Let's go check out one last location. And then I have a feeling that we're gonna have to skip days and try this all over again. This is perhaps the most lucrative area for catching them. Because if you're in a boat, you can literally just like pull them straight into you basically. Feel bad using them, but it's my episode. I can do what I want. And I tell you the truth, I think what I'm actually gonna do, just so I can watch it in front of me, I'm gonna throw out our match rods. I'm gonna watch the bobber, put that in a rod holder and then get the second match rod and I'm just gonna hold it in my hands. First arapaima of this location. Pulling them straight in, which isn't a good sign for being a monster, but they're first arapaima out of here. Alrighty, doesn't look like a very big one here either. Looks like another young guy. I'm gonna go ahead and check out what's on this match rod here. 69 again, top notch. Ah, uh, well at least it's an arapaima versus a young arapaima, but certainly not. Anything to write home about one trophy air pima for the entire day, man. That one looked like he was almost going to go grab that match rod. This might be the first episode where we have to sleep another day to, uh, to try again, I think. Is it? All right. So I did remember that we did skip days trying something different with the alligator gar, but here we are. Second time out, throwing out some bottom rods. I guess just one anyway. We'll put this in the rod holder over here. Having to be the one match rod we were holding, but it doesn't look like that big of a fish. Hoping with us being in the boat, we'll be able to kind of cut them off before they head off to uh, the deeper water. Now for not being such a large fish, we sure are fighting with them for a long time. Been going on for about two minutes now. Alrighty, we've got him. We've got him. Is he a normal size air pima at least? Yes, he is. Well, that's something anyway. There goes our other match rod. We'll keep him just for the heck of it. And hopefully we can reel this guy in. Ooh, oh. he's a big one. Okay, come on now. We got him. He's a boy. Another trophy air pima. Gosh, so close though. Oh. Ah, you know what? That's a good, that's a good move. You know, I enjoy the trophies. They remind me that, you know, it's not just young after young after young. I can't imagine what Jeremy feels like on his trips where he knows he needs to catch a fish and he's only got like, what? Maybe a month maximum to do it? I've just spent two days here. <laughs> so, oh, we'll keep him. Woo! Look at that, the big old Shamu flip. And we got him. And he's another young air pima. So we eat. All right, spot number two already. We're just cruising along here, aren't we? All right, we've already got a fish on. Didn't take too long, did it? 
guess you don't really know because that's just uh just cutting between scenes so to you it's very instant it's actually a pretty good sized fish from the look of him <laughs> oh god it's gonna be another trophy he's he's pretty massive honestly and we have we have fish on the other rods honestly though i'm so impressed by the size of this guy that i think i'm just gonna ignore him and just focus on this dude right now i know the last one i was telling myself not to get excited it's probably just a trophy this one i feel like 90 percent certain that he's the unique we're looking for he is a monstrous arapaima and if he's a trophy, I'm gonna feel so embarrassed, but seriously, <laughs> he looks, he looks a giant. Plus, these meters are just rising and falling. Like, it's hard to not reel in because, look at these meters, man. This is, this is what happens when you usually have a unique on. I have a really good retrieve on this reel, but I'm still, like, finding myself walking backwards because I don't want to lose this guy. This is a ginormous fish. But we got him sub 100. I have no doubt that he'll take us back out to 100 though, if he gets the chance. Hopefully he starts coming towards us, but there he goes out to 120 again and 30 and so on. And we're back out to 170. All I keep thinking is like, I am like nervous to get this guy in and losing him because these meters keep dropping so fast. But like, can you imagine what Jeremy must feel like when he's got a fish on? Like, trying to reel it in, knowing that, you know, their crew's been out there for, like, two weeks or whatever, you know, filming all this stuff, and he needs to catch a monster. I was literally about to say that I think this is our moment to reel him in, and they took us out to 110 again. All right, we've been fighting him just under five minutes now. Got him. He's coming towards us, actually. 60s now. 50s. So, oh, just over 60 again. Oh, he's on his side. He's on his side. Come on, dude. Get in here. Get in here. Net him, he nil. He nil, net him, bro. He's on his side. He's on his side. He's not even swimming. Come on, get in. Get on the bank. Get on the bank. We got him. 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 Come on. Let's go. Oh, my God. Oh, thank goodness gracious. It's actually too big for my keep net. Holy crap, dude. Oh, well, that is exactly what we were searching for. A genuine river monster, unique Arapaima, 325 pounds. Was that it? Insanity. 323 pounds. Still a big fish, dude. 23,183 XP. 39,243 dollars. Can't keep him, though. But look at this fish with Henail. Wow, dude. We're gonna have to move so that we can uh, get a better picture of him. That is insane. Ah, oh, well, everyone, that is exactly what we are out here looking for. Um, something a fish even Jeremy Wade would be impressed with, I'm pretty sure. We cannot keep him, unfortunately, so we'll release him back into the depths. But, uh, man, oh my, what a trip out here in the Amazon. If this helped you in any way to go chase down your own river monster, your own Amazon assassin, or perhaps the living missile, uh, go out, catch your own. Hopefully this video helped you do so. Just to give you an idea exactly where this guy is, um, I've already got him marked, so might as well show you right here. Uh, well, here, let's, uh, we'll delete this one. Throw this one down. There we go. Large minnows this time, no small minnows. 323 pounds, 106 inches long. Very cool. Well, that is it, everyone. Hopefully you can mark it down and go find your own. Use some large minnows, 10 hot hooks, and uh, go get them. I'll show you exactly the weather that we were using as well, just so that you know. There you go, right there, everyone. Right on that big old hill. So, anyway, if the video was helpful, make sure you hit that like button. If you want to see more episodes of the River Monsters series or just any episodes like this in the future, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell so that you get notified whenever a new video comes out. And if you want to check us out on our live streams every Monday, Wednesday, make sure you do so. 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. Central. Um, check us out. Come join. It's a lot of fun. We have up to 200 people sometimes just all chatting about fishing and fishing planet. It's a blast. And I hope to see you there in the future. But until the next episode, everyone, take care. And as always, remember everyone, we're one planet, one family. Game on.